Catching in a small hop in certain situations speeds up your shot preparation and allows you to get off your shot as quickly as possible. Some circumstances where this occurs in a game would be receiving a skip pass on the weak side, receiving a pass from the post, or receiving a pass from dribble penetration. In addition, when running at full speed or dribbling at full speed, it's necessary to stop yourself with two feet rather than putting on the brakes with one. And I want your feet to be prepared for shooting in all situations. Eight, two foot hop. Facing the goal, step with and jump off your right foot and catch the pass while landing on both feet. Without pause, explode into your shot. Time the pass hitting your hands with your feet hitting the ground. It doesn't have to be a big hop, just enough to load your legs with vertical energy. If you're by yourself, spin yourself a pass. Game application. The game application is the same as before. You must be comfortable leaving the ground off either leg. Nine, square in the air. Line your shoulders up with the shot line. Left shoulder pointing to the goal. Take one step with your inside foot, the left foot, leave the ground, get square to the goal in the air, catch and shoot. If you're by yourself, spin yourself a pass. Game application. You might be coming off a screen. You might be moving laterally along the arc. Regardless of the reason, this technique allows you to shoot from a two-foot hop while getting square to the goal at the same time. 10, square in the air. You guessed it. Line your shoulders up with the shot line. Right shoulder pointing to the goal. Take one step with your inside foot, the right foot. Leave the ground. Get square to the goal in the air. Catch and shoot. If you're by yourself, spin yourself a pass. Game application. The game application is the same as the previous step. We're simply training both feet like we train both hands. Great players have no weak hand, no weak footwork, and no favored direction. Great shooters master all situations. Concluding notes. Let me be perfectly clear about the hop versus the one-two. I said earlier that the one-two is the quickest way to shoot off the dribble. But like I've shown in our video, Better One-on-One -on -one Offense, the hop can be used to separate yourself from your defender in case a quick shot from a 1-2 is not enough to keep it from being blocked. You can use it in the mid-range as a side hop or to cover more ground to the goal. Or it can be used when you drive a defender inside the arc and hop back to create space for a 3. Just remember, use the 1-2 for the quickest shot and use the hop only when you need to create space. Great shooters can do both and will choose the best footwork for the right situation. Chapter 3. Now tell me why, step by step. This chapter contains the explanations for everything in Chapter 1. In fact, the questions and answers follow the same order as the teaching points in Chapter 1. If you don't need to know the why behind each step in Chapter 1, then skip this chapter for now. However, you must eventually become your own best shot coach. And to be your own best shot coach, you must understand the why for every detail of your shot technique. So, it will be to your benefit to come back later and work your way through this chapter. Why is your stance important? Keeping the ball straight during its flight to the goal is the first priority when shooting. If the fly of the ball is not straight, then everything else could be perfect and the result will still be a miss. Keeping the ball straight starts with your stance. The ball has a tendency to follow the line perpendicular to your shoulders. If your stance turns your shoulders away from the goal, then the ball will have a tendency to follow that line and you'll have to compensate in some other area of your shot form. Now, how strict am I about the idea of shoulders and feet being square? Your shooting shoulder has a tendency to lead the other shoulder because your shooting arm does all the work of the shooting stroke. If you leave this motion unchecked and undisciplined, then the shooting stroke will twist or torque the body. 
This torque from a right-handed shooter will send the fly of the ball to the left and you'll find yourself consciously or unconsciously compensating with other parts of your body to keep the ball straight. So, when I'm training the shooter, I stick to a strict square form with shoulders and feet, knowing full well that when they shoot in the game, there'll be some slippage. Your training must remain strict in order to minimize the game slippage. This is so important and so misunderstood that I want to elaborate on it a bit more just to ensure that you understand me. Game shots are rarely as perfect as training shots. That's what I meant by game slippage. I always train a shooter as close to perfectly square as possible, knowing that in a game he or she will not hit their stance perfectly. Perhaps their right foot lands an inch or two in front of their left, and their right shoulder leads the left by an inch or two. That's okay. It's okay. That won't be enough to turn your shoulders or affect your balance.